Well, it's, it's my honor and privilege to uh, have spent the afternoon with you, Mr. John Howe, uh, uh, who uh, was a teacher and later a principal at Plymouth Canton Community Schools for 28 years. And uh, my name is Dan Sabo, and I had Mr. Howe, Mr. John Howe, for fifth grade at Starkweather Elementary School. And then after, after uh, that time, he became principal. And we're just going to do a short little interview with uh, Mr. Howe and uh, uh, get some of his recollections down. And the first thing I wanted to ask you is you, you started teaching uh, in 1958 in Plymouth Schools, I believe? Yes, that's right. Okay. I okay. enjoyed it very much. Okay. And uh, I was a gym teacher first. I see. I went to uh, Gallimore School, Bird School. And I went to the outlying school. You remember Truesdale? Yes. And Hub? Yes. And what was the third one? Do you remember the third one? I uh, in the school Truesdale, district. Truesdale, Hub. In Plymouth schools. Plymouth schools. We had one room schools when I started teaching. In oh, oh, I wasn't aware that the, the one was one room schoolhouses. Well, the one room schools. Well, some of them had two teachers, but most of them were considered one-room schools. I see. And I had gym classes. I either had to hold them in the classroom, uh -huh. or if it was nice weather, I took them outside. I see. So I was a gym teacher for approximately uh, six years. Now, where were the the, the one-room schoolhouses located approximately in, in, in the Plymouth? Well, you mean the Huff yes. School? Yes. Yeah. Uh, they were both out. They were out in the country, of course. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember exactly the location, mm -hmm. but uh, now there's big subdivisions. Probably not there. anymore. All those, country, yes. all those places are been swallowed up with yes. subdivision. Yes. Uh, Truesdale. I can't remember the third school, but uh, Cherry Hill. Cherry Hill. Cherry yep. Hill School. Yep. Yep. Which was built by Ford. Yes, that's, himself. that's still standing that now. I, I believe it's still. It's it still, is. Yeah. Is it I still think, there? I think it is. It's. It's. Uh, well, that's it's, interesting. But he, that area. He went down up. the line, in one of his factories, talking to the men, and he found that there was a teacher there yes. who couldn't find a job. He says, "I'm going to build you a school, and you're going to teach there." Uh -huh. So that's how Cherry Hill was founded. I see. I see. So I enjoyed that traveling one. Uh -huh. it, it wasn't easy for the. The teachers, because the teachers had to stay right in the classroom. Yes, yes. And, and didn't get a chance to leave it. And we had to play games with the desks in a way, but we played really games mm -hmm. involving uh, roles were used as the relay teams. We, so, and we went outside and played that when the weather was nice. Right, right. From there... Uh, there is an opening at Starkwood School. Yes. For fourth grade. Fourth grade. At that time, I believe my wife was working there, part time or full time. Yes. So it was not an. It was something that wasn't uh, done often in prison for. For the wife and the husband were in the same building. Right. But there would be some complications in that. Yeah, right. So she moved to Bird School. She had a position there. Uh huh. And I remained at fourth grade at Starkwood School. Now, what, what year was that when you, again, when you uh, started? Uh, don't don't ask me questions okay. like that. That's a little. But, Probably uh, in the early 60s, I would think. Early it'd be the late 60s, early 60s. 70s. Okay. Uh, and at that time, Ann Welch and Jean Warnett taught. Fifth grade, oh. yes, and uh, uh, Troyer was it Helen Troyer? Troyer, yes, I remember her. She taught, she taught fourth grade, and I taught fourth grade. Yeah. Um, now I, mean, I remember when she taught fourth grade, and I was in your fifth grade class. Okay. You know? Yeah, and that was in 1970, 71. Okay, then you know you know better than I the the dates. Uh, from there, huh. believe it or not, I took my fourth grade to fifth grade. Uh -huh. When Ann Welch would be principal oh, okay. at uh, uh, that Vigo, what's the school? Fairn. Fairn, Fairn. Um, yeah, at Fairn School, uh, she would be principal there. So the fifth grade opened, and they wanted somebody. So 
I took my fourth grade students, those that wanted to go, uh -huh. with me to fifth grade. I and I think I took about all of them. Right. And what was the advantage of that? They knew me. And so there wasn't a lot of settling down and getting used to each other. Right. So that was one of the advantages. Right. Um, so I ended up in fifth grade. Uh huh. And I taught fifth grade for how many years, honey? I can't remember, Jim. But uh, Mildred Field was the principal at that time. And uh, she she lived, uh, oh, maybe, uh, uh, I'm trying to think where she lived exactly, but she was taking was, care of her father at the time. I believe she lived on the uh, Harvey, and, Harvey and Farmer. Yeah. Okay, and it was see, the uh, north, my memory is northeast like, corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, yeah. sometimes I'd go there with her and have lunch with her and uh -huh. her father. Right. That was That was nice for the father. Right. As he was, he was kind of in the house permanently. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Um, and so that's a memory I have. Mm -hmm. uh, so Mildred was a wonderful person. She was. was a wonderful I remember teacher. her well when she was principal. I remember she yeah. came into my classroom and I had, and because she visited the classroom yeah. to evaluate each teacher. That was one of the jobs. I thought the best evaluation is the kids. They can evaluate the teacher better than anybody else. Uh -huh. But anyway, that's what she had to do. Right. And she came into my room and spent maybe a half hour. Uh -huh. And uh, she called me then in the office afterwards and we kind of interviewed. She said, John, she said, uh, wasn't it a little bit noisy in your classroom? I said, well, yes, it was. <laughs> but Mildred, was a good nose or was it bad noise? <laughs> for man. She said, John, it was good noise. <laughs> I said, well, that's what I like, too. Because yeah. in my classroom, I was not the best teacher in the world, and I know that. Well, I, I would disagree with you Well, <laughs> anyway, I did a lot of individual teaching, if you uh -huh. remember. Uh -huh. you're, 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 you're I individualized reading and arithmetic, wow, yes. arithmetic wow. particularly. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Because it had oh, so many different water. grade levels at both those subjects. <laughs> right. And uh, it was noisy because of that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Because they had to turn in their papers each day to me. Yes. I took them home each night and looked at each paper. I put three things on each paper. One was okay, mm -hmm. meaning he got everything right. Right. Or close to right, everything. Uh, correct. Mm -hmm. means they had to correct it and then turn it back into me to see to so that I could see they understood their mistakes mm -hmm. or see me mm -hmm. means they had they had a problem right that they they needed help with mm -hmm. so I would call those see me's up to me around my desk I'd make a circle of chairs right we would go over each see me problem and the others would be working at they worked at their own speed right they could use go as fast as they wanted in arithmetic or reading. Mm -hmm. I used S A R reading. Right. We call it. S R A. It was color coded. Yeah, I remember that. I loved S R. So rather I remember than that well. rather than have the kids feel inadequate, right, or lose their self esteem because right. they were called on to read out loud, mm -hmm. which I never did in my classroom. And yet, yet they worked at individual levels right. at by. Color and you would graduate way to a different color up to, up yes. to chain. Yep. Then they had that. a test. If they passed that test, mm -hmm. they could move on to the next color. I think blue was the highest, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Blue was the highest. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, that's how I I did a lot of my teaching was individualized, mm -hmm. and those that uh, could do the math quickly and get done. Mm -hmm. I had a library, if you remember, in the corner. Yeah. Yes. With all kinds of books. Yeah. And chairs in there and they could go to the library. Yeah. They understood my rule is very simple. Don't do anything that to the other person that you would have them do to you. Right. And no no unreasonable noise. Mm -hmm. I had students helping students, if you recall. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And to me, there was an advantage to the person that was helping and to the person 
people are receiving the help. Yeah. So I taught that way. Mm -hmm. I call it individualized. Uh -huh. Now, I only do the, those two subjects. Right. The other subject, like science, where I like science, we did things. I, I, I bought ha pig hearts from the grocery store, if you remember. And we, I think, uh, I think I vaguely remember. Yeah, we we dissect it and they look at the different chambers of the heart because uh -huh. they're very similar to the human heart. <laughs> yeah, and of course, a lot of the kids would would make faces and that, but they love doing it. Right. right. And if I remember some of my classes, I know a few <laughs> students that went on to into the field of medicine. Mm -hmm. Not that I was necessarily, but I think they had a feel for the body because right. I use I use the different systems doing science, the body system, mm -hmm. the circulatory system, uh etc. Mm -hmm. And so I did a lot of science with the and I'm and I'm not anatomy or uh, that's the word I'm trying to say. Um uh, the anatom anatomical or uh anatomy of the body. Anatomy? Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, and I'm probably not pronouncing the word correctly, but the the human body, and they took interest in that. Also, in science, we taught. I taught flight, if you remember. Yes. In fact, I remember. I remember a field trip you took us on. Uh, you took us on a turbo turbo prop plane yes. in, out of Detroit Metro, and I think yes. that was in 1970. And I still remember the stewardesses. They they wore these really tall. Hats. Oh, I didn't pay any attention to and, that. And it was a noisy plane because it was a turboprop. Yeah. And we, we flew, flew around the field. You and, remember that? Yeah, yeah. Remember we had balls of wood and, and people, mm -hmm. they all made, you made gliders? Yep, yep. We talked about the, how the uh, the wings aided in the, the rise of the right. airplane and right. the different terminology. I remember you were very big on field trips. Do, do you, to your knowledge, is that still done today as much as it was back in the 70s, uh, uh, field trips in the class? or Because uh, you thought that was very important to have the... Well, I thought it was important for people to under, understand mm -hmm. science. Mm -hmm. And, of mm -hmm. course, an airplane provides a lot of science. Oh, yeah. Of how it stays in the air, mm -hmm. how the lift of the wings, mm -hmm. and et cetera. And, of course, that field trip, we all, on the weekend, no parents... <laughs> The parents' permission. Right. We took that flight. Right. Right. And so those that's the things I remember is treating kids because children come to you from different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, we are pretty much our life is determined by environment as ready as 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 ready as as heritage. Yes. Yes. And uh, so when you have a room of 30 kids. Yes. You have 30 individuals. Yes. And you get to treat them as individuals as much as possible. You can't all be on the same page at the same time. That's right. It just isn't realistic. That's right. That's so I right. tried to meet the individual needs as best I could. Yes. And I wasn't always successful. Some of them fell through the cracks, and I felt badly about that. Uh, and some of the teachers were upset with me because when they got them, they were so far ahead in math or or reading that it was boring to them because they had to stay at at the middle of the of the stream, so to speak. Uh -huh. They had everybody on the same page, right. and they used to ask me. I said, "Well, that's my technique of teaching. Everybody has a technique." And how they teach. That was my technique. Mm -hmm. Individualized as much as I could possibly could. As the years have gone on, do you think that that technique has been restricted more uh, uh, as far as teaching is concerned? Um, uh, is there less freedom to to have your own teaching method these days, um, do you feel? Uh, uh, that's, that's a hard question to answer. I, I think how I could answer that is... Um, I carried my teaching methods into my principalship as much as I could. Uh huh. Uh huh. Now, how how the two relate? Well, I'll tell you. Being a principal is also a teaching position. Mm -hmm. More of the the whole school than than a classroom. Mm -hmm. For instance, 
I don't know if you recall, but I was head of sixth grade camps. Yes. I took all sixth graders out to Proud Lake. Proud Lake, yep, yep. And they spent a week out there in the outdoors, and I loved that. Mm -hmm. And I so remember, did the kids. I remember the Proud Lake Monster. The Proud Lake Monster. <laughs> well, I won't tell that story. Oh, okay. Because I only <laughs> told it when kids had to go home for some reason. Some were homesick. As I took them home, I'd tell them the story because okay. he would miss it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, as a principal, I try to individualize it this way. Mm -hmm. I took the lunch hour and turned it into some of the things we did out of Proud Lake. Right. In other words, we had tables with servers and hostess and and uh, hostesses. And so at the, in the class or in the gymnasium when they let the tables down, mm -hmm. I had the fifth grade students and this was an agreement with the cook in the kitchen because I couldn't do it without them. Uh -huh, uh -huh. First what I did is bring canvas in and had the kids before they left empty their trays on the canvas. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Well, it was piled with garbage. Uh-huh. They didn't eat what they should have. They were in a hurry to get out to recess. Right, right. So I said, what can I do? How, how can I make sure that, because a lot of those kids came from one-parent families. Mm -hmm. Their best meal, in a lot of cases, was that noon meal at school. Yes, yes. But, it wasn't always that appetizing. So what could I do? So I took the method up Proud Lake. The kids came down. They sat at one table. Uh -huh. I had a fifth grade as a hostess mm -hmm. and a fifth grade as a server. Right. And the kitchen agreed to do it family style. Right. Mashed potatoes sat on a table. Uh -huh. The meat on a platter. The vegetables on a platter. The hostess or host started around the table and passed the mashed potatoes. They could take, I told them, as much as they want, but they had to eat it. They could always have seconds. Right. So they didn't want mashed potatoes, they didn't have to take it. They weren't going to eat it. I mean, that was not the purpose I had in mind, was to force them to eat the mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. My problem was to get them to eat right. what we had. Right. So they round and go. That the meat was passed around, they would take it or take what was on, and the vegetables went around. Dessert the same way. Right. They needed more. The server went to the kitchen. First, they brought the food, but for seconds, they went back for more mashed potatoes or et cetera. But the child learned manners, mm -hmm. learned to eat his mm -hmm. food rather than throw it away. Yeah. If they didn't want to put much on their plate, that was. Their choice. Yes. But they had to eat what I put on their plate. And yeah. They knew that. Yeah. So they were very, very careful of what they took. If yes. they weren't going to eat, they didn't take it. Uh -huh. They weren't sure of it. They looked at other people to see what they would take. <laughs> and so they might try it. Mm -hmm. That way, I individualized the lunchroom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the cook was very cooperative in doing that. Mm -hmm. But it was easier than kids passing with their tray and filling a dob here and a dob there. Right. They right. had to take whatever they put it, and they they wouldn't eat it. Uh -huh. Not uh -huh. all of it. Mm -hmm. They used the excuse, I want to get outside and play. Here they had to wait to be dismissed by the hostess. Right. As soon as they were, and as a group, they were dismissed. They had to sit there to everybody. Uh -huh. And so that was manners that they were taught. And so as a principal... That was one of the things that done. And another thing we did, we did a lot of walking down to to different field trips. If you remember walking all the way downtown, yes, yes. I'd always be in the front leading. Uh -huh. I'd always have my patrol or last of the older kids in the background. Mm -hmm. The only comment I heard the teacher said, you walk too fast, John. <laughs> but we did a lot, a lot of field trips yes. in that way. Yes. Because yes. we had a lot of resources mm -hmm. right in the town, and we had available to yes. us yes. that other schools didn't have. 
So yeah. we took advantage of that. Yeah, that, that, that brings me to the, another question. Like, uh, as far as, uh, do you have any uh, uh, memories or anything you'd like to share about about uh, Old Village in general, either the businesses or the or the people, the, the characters that lived in Old Village? Uh, um, any recollections you'd like to share about uh, your experience teaching uh, at the school in in such a tight knit neighborhood back then? Any anything in particular that um, fond memories in that area, <coughs> um, or the the train station? Uh, how we could uh, hop a train from Old Village to downtown Detroit or anywhere in the state, pretty much. And, and well, any... the only reference I knew about that is I had a lawyer friend. Uh huh. Who caught that train every day. and he and from I Plymouth was called for jewelry duty. Uh huh. <coughs> Excuse me, I need a drink of water. <coughs> I was on jury duty, and he showed me how to get on there, or, or showed me how the connection of the train. Uh huh. So I took the train with him to down the. He went. He went to to work, and I went to the. Federal building or wherever the courthouse was. Yes. Justice and that's Murphy. that's the memories I have. Uh huh. Uh, thank you. But the biggest memories I have uh -huh. is the Rouge Park was just below our yes. playground. And we'd have picnics there every every year. Yeah. And yeah. I used to take my class when mm -hmm. the weather was halfway decent. Yeah. We'd go down in the park. Uh -huh. I teach about the different rocks, geology, mm -hmm. uh, and little other terms of geology, and and I, and I brought that from the Proud Lake because that's what I taught out of Proud Lake. Yes, yes. was the different what was left by the glacier action, mm -hmm. and a lot of those stones were granite left by the glacier action. Yes, the whole valley was left by the glacier action of the River, River Rouge yeah. Park. Yep. Yeah. And I talked about different things that weren't necessarily there, but I talked about uh, eskers, which were uh, rivulets that came from the glacier that dropped sediment, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, caves, which our, our uh, sand pits came from, because mm -hmm. the water flew off yeah. down in it, so the heavy stuff at the bottom, the lighter stuff, so uh, we had a, a gravel pit that was designated by the esker, the flow of the water. So we learned a lot about geology by right. going down to the the uh, River Rouge uh, yeah. Parkway. It was so nice to, to be so, so close to the uh, the river, the uh, uh, Heinz Park system, right on the border. It was, and uh, I remember kids going back there often and going, sometimes going under the fence into the park. And yes, you remember <laughs> that. I didn't do it, but but so <laughs> I, <knew. laughs> I know I knew kids oh, who did it. <laughs> but I had I had uh, written permission from the parents uh -huh, uh -huh. that I could do that because I'd take them off school property, and there was a certain amount. I mean, I didn't do it during school, so <laughs> only after school. <laughs> only after school. I didn't know that, Dan. But uh, <laughs> but not under the fence. Are so. you part of this interview? <laughs> you want you want to give a few details? No, no, of no, your no, life? no. I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, it was a great experience for me because I just yeah. loved loved the kids. Well, and they enjoyed the, doing the kids, things. The kids loved you, and and the, those kids now are in their forties and fifties and sixties, and they they still love you and remember you well. So you have a big big yeah. following in Plymouth, and yeah, and you were treasured and much appreciated. And, yeah, and by so many. And, and you that's remember? Why you're here. Do you remember the rot the Roterraces? The the Roterraces. Roterraces. Uh, no. I had both a daughter and a son. Uh huh. Well, one year, he came to me and asked if I would be um, Grand Marshal for the 4th of July parade uh -huh. in Plymouth. Now, do you remember about when that was? What approximate time frame or what year? I don't know was? what year that was. Uh, I uh, I have a picture we, there on the wall. We can wall find out. Nor's going to get. We can. I don't know. But I was supposed to fly into Canada and go fishing that week. Oh, but my decision was I would, of course, be honored because uh -huh. he had the convertible that I was to sit on and ride. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I wonder when So, that... the 4th of July, I don't know when it felt. Probably on a... That, I'll bet you that was in the, in, in the late 80s. Okay. There, oh, there we go. There's the picture. Oh, there you are. 
Oh, that's a good picture. What's the year, Dan? You can read it. It looks like... Uh, 80. What? Oh, that's 63. 1963? No, no, no. It can't be because that's the new museum. It's uh, Oh, that's the na the year of the car, I oh. think. Oh. Well, th this would have to have been after 1971 or two because that's the new museum building. Okay. So it... Uh, but uh, that's a good picture of you two. Here, I'm going to hold that up. So uh, you want to hold that up and show. <laughs> there we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's pretty so good. Anyway, that, that was quite an honor for yeah. me. Uh, that's good. That's a good picture. So how soon after the party did you leave? So I didn't miss out on my fishing trip. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> because I drove by myself and they flew me in separately to my camp. So. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Do, do you remember much about uh, oh, some of the businesses in the old village, like uh, Curly's Barbershop? I think you knew the... the well, Curly's Barbershop, Don Gray and, I, I happened to get my hair cut there. Uh-huh. And I bowled with... Uh, what was his... Well, there was Don Gray, I think. and Don. And, now, that was the son, wasn't it? Don was his son. And uh, Curly was... Uh, Curly was his father. Yeah, and he was totally bald almost. And yeah. I remember getting my first haircut. And I remember the bakery there. The Goodale's Bakery? The Goodale Bakery. Yep. Uh, we used to be, I used to stop there too <laughs> too often, but I enjoyed it. But they left and where did they move? Yeah, I, I remember Taylor, when, I was really young right, when they, I was, right, I think, six or seven right, years old right. and they moved up to, to Grayling, I think. Yeah. Was, and uh, yeah, right. everybody in Old Village was disappointed that they left, left town, um, but we were just up in Grayling a few years ago, and there they are. They're they're up, uh, up and running in, in Grayling. Okay, and uh, well, that's good to know. And the florist, we enjoyed that. And the florist, uh, Heidi's. Yeah. Heidi's greenhouse. Yeah, yeah. You probably remember uh, Bill Ruer, the owner of Heidi's greenhouse on Mill Street. Uh, that was a. Can you hear you? Can you so you probably remember Heidi's greenhouse too. Oh sure. Yeah. I knew Bill. Yeah, um, knew him quite well. Mm -hmm. uh, and who him. else did, did we have? Uh, I worked for him for a summer. Oh, did you? In, in 1976. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He was a great guy. Yeah. And, and I think they finally moved downtown, did they? Well, the story I heard was that his brother mm -hmm. uh, started Heidi's Florist in downtown. Florida, oh, okay. The brother did that. And they were involved in a, a legal dispute over the Heidi's name. Okay, um, I remember that little uh, shop, a little grocery store, Dickerson's uh, Market. Bentley's. Uh, uh, what was her name? She was our uh, playground supervisor. Oh, Bennett. Yes, Bill's Bennett. Market. Bill's Market. Her son worked there. Yeah, yeah, the son worked there for yeah. many years. I think it was John, John Bennett. I yes. Think. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And trying to think. What else have they turned the depot into a uh, restaurant? Well, yeah. Well, they moved the the freight depot across the street, and then they there's a restaurant there now, Station Oh, is there? Okay. Yep. And uh, yeah, I I haven't been down that area. And in the a train long depot, time. the train depot is a, a new business too. I think it's a. Uh, it was a. Look at him. I forgot. I forgot what it was converted into, but it was recently uh, purchased, and uh, but the train depot still stands. The old depot. Yeah, I mean the McMullen family who lived on the corner, kitty corner from the school. Had a lot of his uh, uh, family uh -huh. came to Stark with the school, and I remember that uh, when we first moved into our house at Lake Point, we didn't have a lawn, of course. But he he would bring any leftover sod <laughs> to our house, and I ended up with a variety of lawn, all kinds of grass. <laughs> Yeah. But that's the kind of man he was. So he was dark, very, yeah. a very giving person. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, of course, the Thompson family, he lived just down the street. Mm -hmm. I, I had uh, a number of his. And then what was the other family that uh, was down? I had I had a son and two, two daughters that went through my uh, in my classroom. Gosh, I can't remember their names. Uh, anyway, uh, Old Town to me was just a wonderful place. Everybody knew everybody. Yes. And yes. everybody was, well, was took interest in each other. 
Yeah. And I appreciated that because they really supported the Stark with the school. And, uh, yeah, it was a good, a good neighborhood school. It really, yeah, it really was. A good neighborhood school. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember you uh, telling me a story, uh, uh, when I, when I was in your, your class about, uh, you had caught a student red handed chipping the inscription off of the Even cornerstone. On the cornerstone. Yeah. Yeah. I at the Starkweather school. Yeah. And, and you that's know, why I don't really, recall that i'm sorry to say it should be really stick in my mind mm -hmm. uh and that's why part of the inscription was missing uh, yeah when we were, yeah i don't i probably wasn't too hard on him i probably <laughs> made him i made him redo the the numbers of 1927 on a <laughs>